Right, so what is up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel once again. You know I appreciate having you here. Now I'm out today on this, the wonderfully great Honda Super Cub, the 125, the brand new C125. Now this is a 2019 model. It's a Super Cub, it's by Honda and it's fantastic. Now I've just done the walk around, I shall put that in in a little bit but what I'm going to do is tell you a little bit about the bike as we're riding round. Right, so let me tell you a little bit about myself before we get into the bike. So you know about the ergonomics, those of you who have watched the first impression of mine before will know that I'm six foot two, quite long in the leg, wide in the shoulder and I'm now 17 stone. I was 16 stone on the last one. I've had a little bit of good living and a, a trip to America that has helped me pile on the pounds for that one. Right, so what have we got here? We've got the brand new 2019, oh this corner, <laughs> sorry, I wonder if it's a wheelie, <laughs> it does, anyway, back to the point, I'm on this brand new 2019 Honda Super Cub, the C125, I've just done a little bit of a walk around at the bottom of Box Hill there, I should drop that in in a minute to give you guys an idea of what it looks like, round and about, certain features on it, bits and bobs and all the information you need on it will be in that bit, but I'm out riding this bit so I want to tell you what it's like riding, and uh, I've been on it probably about an hour now, I've done a few miles on it, and I've been having fun riding the country lanes. It's a glorious day out here in the Surrey countryside. And I've been having a blast. This thing is excellent. It's not fast by any stretch of the imagination. It's not fast, but it is fun. These 17 inch wheels mean you can just dive into corners like a lunatic, basically. I'm not advising that you do that, but I'm just saying it makes it so much fun. It's got really tiny thin tyres on, it's almost like riding a BMX, that's how I can describe it. It's like a BMX with an engine. And it is so manoeuvrable, it is so much fun just to chuck around and have a giggle on. The big wheels, the 17 inch wheels do make such a difference. The suspension is not choppy, but it's not as supple as it could be, but then it's not an expensive bike. Yeah, this bike comes in at 3399, so it's not an expensive bike. It's not a luxury bike, it's a scooter at the end of the day, so you kind of expect it. It is comfortable, the seat's very comfortable, it's only a single seater, so I'm right on the edge of comfort because I'm sitting right on the back of the seat. But ergonomically, my legs are probably slightly too long for it, but my knees do fit under the handlebar, so like other scooters where you're forced forward, this one's not too bad in essence. I've got plenty of leg room, my legs do not bang on anything but it does feel small, it feels like, as I said before, a BMX. Mirrors, useless. If you want to look at your elbows, oh it's fantastic. I mean I've got some seriously sexy elbows so I like these mirrors. But if you actually want to look behind, you've kind of got a dab, you couldn't see that. Anyone coming this way would see a really poor dab then. But you kind of got a dab to uh, get your elbow out of the way so you can see behind. Instrumentation, pretty clear, it's got a gear indicator, it's got the fuel gauge on. Uh, I would kind of like to see revs, I don't know why, you can feel them and you can hear them, but it's always nice to see a little rev counter in there when you've got gears. When I was down at Box Hill it did draw quite a bit of attention, there wasn't many people there but the ones that were there came over and had a chat about it and were really impressed with the looks. The biggest drawback for me on this bike is it hasn't got a pillion seat or rack or anything for the back so it's a single seater, it's a pure solo bike because it doesn't actually have any rear foot pegs either. So it's not as if you can just stick a seat on there and uh, they've got somewhere to sit. They've got nowhere to sit because they've got no foot pegs and no rear seat. Hopefully at some point either Honda or an aftermarket company will come out with a solution for that and they will probably sell twice as many. The gearbox is a little bit weird for me. Coming from motorcycles I find it weird that you're clicking down to go up the gearbox and then having to use your heel to go from four back to one. I mean it is weird in the sense you haven't got to pull the clutch in as well, it is pure semi-automatic. The clutch actually engages when you push the pedal down and then when you release the pedal again it engages in the gear. So that's a little bit strange but you will get used to it. I would prefer a more normal type gearbox as in you flick it up to go up the gearbox and tap it down to go down but that's just my preference coming off of motorcycles and uh, being in this market 
I think I would prefer a fully automatic bike. Yeah, I think more people will get on with it if it's a fully auto. I mean, it is quirky. I do like it in the sense that it gives you something to do, it adds to the fun. But I'm not sure how many people would appreciate that over a fully automatic scooter. Protection-wise, zero. You've got nothing here. I'm sure there'll be a screen for this, a really massive one especially for the Italian market. They like a riot shield on the front of their bikes. So I'm sure you'll be able to get something for the front of this. But at the moment, there's no protection. You're getting pure wind in the face and on the chest, but you're not going to go that fast. So you're not going to worry about that. Leg wise, you're only going to know that when it's raining, it has got these shields on, but my legs kind of stick out where the wind blows into them. So I would imagine that it will blow the rain actually onto my legs unless I tuck them in. But because there's nothing in the middle here, you can tuck them right in. It's not a natural position. You feel really strange doing it, but you can kind of get them out of the way of the majority of the wind blast. For such a light bike, it actually feels better on the road than I was thinking. It doesn't skit around as much as I thought it was going to. And that's probably down to the bigger wheels. Although it has got really, really thin tires. So you do feel the bumps, but not in a nasty way. You could just feel them. It's sort of like you can feel the vibrations. They're not crashing and not banging. And you've got to bear in mind, I am 17 stone, so I'm probably compressing the rear suspension more than it was designed to do straight off the bat. Right, so let's have a little bit more fun through these country lanes. Let's see how it handles, if I can just push it a little bit. You shouldn't really be doing this on a scooter. This is not a, a bike you should push around. This is basically a commuter. You take this into London, not around country lanes. But you know what I'm like. You know I love these types of roads and I'm gonna ride these all day long. Of course, this will be fantastic in town. This through London will be brilliant. It is so thin, it is so light. Anyone will be able to ride it. But remember to invest in a decent rucksack that's waterproof because it has no storage. Right, so I'm gonna go out on a limb now and say this is not how the majority of people that own this bike will ride it. And these are not the majority of roads that this bike will be ridden on. But let's have some fun. loses quite a bit of power in fourth gear up the hill but again that could be my weight yeah, it's not the greatest when pushed but it's not designed for that when you sort of like relax on it you ease off the throttle then change gears it's very smooth very nice very polite to be precise if that's the thing can you have a polite handling bike well you've got one now i don't know what that means but i'm sticking with it basically what i mean is it's easy and you're going to drag me for this. I know you're going to drag me for this because it's a Honda. It's easy. You only review Hondas. You say they're all easy. You love all bikes. And yes, I do. I like all bikes. It's not a sin, people. It's not a sin. I'm a biker. I like riding bikes. Yes, Honda give me the bikes. Yes, Dobles give me the bikes. So I'm going to ride them, aren't I? I'm not going to turn them down. Even ones like this. And you don't realize how much fun you can have on a little 125 until you get on one and have that fun. this truly is a great bike do you know what the more I ride it the more I like it at first I wasn't too sure I mean I like the lightness of it and I quite like the handling but I wasn't sold on this gearbox but now I'm having fun on these little country lanes it works it gives you that extra little bit of fun as I said before I'm not sure many people are going to buy this bike for this type of riding but it will do it I test all my bikes down these roads. I test all my bikes on country lanes. Every bike I get, I will test around these sort of roads because this is where I like to ride. This will be great in town. There is no doubt about that. This will be a fantastic commuter bike. But having fun around these lanes is brilliant. This is what biking's about. It's about enjoying yourself. It's about putting a smile on your face. And this little C125, this Super Cub, is living up to its name. I would go out on a limb and say, it's super. I am having a blast. More than I've got any right to on this bike. Another problem I have with it is my foot's too big. So I kind of, every now and again, I rest my heel on the shifter. So it kind of engages the clutch, puts it into almost a false neutral. So that's a little bit of a problem. So I'd have to work my way around that. I'm not sure how it's going to get out of this hill. You can't see this on the GoPro. This is quite steep. So I'm full throttle in third. It got up there all right at 35 miles an hour. It's starting to slow down a bit now. 
it does struggle on hills a bit but as I said before that could be due to my weight as well 17 stone on this bike is not ideal so you have to kind of work the gearbox when you're going uphill you have to drop it down and then pin it but I suppose that's all part of the charm and this bike does have bags of charm I'm going to take it back on this gearbox I'm going to take it back and say no this bike shouldn't have an automatic gearbox this bike is absolutely fantastic with this semi-automatic I'm enjoying it it's adding to the fun it's making it a little bit different it's a little bit different and I like that I like quirkiness I like when people go out on a limb and uh, they haven't changed anything they've stuck with the original concepts I mean they're not going out on a limb in the sense that they're doing something different they're sticking with the original gearbox which a lot of people will frown upon especially if you're new to biking what I'm saying is a lot of people who want scooters are getting into this sort of like fashion market I'm gonna call it I'm gonna call it a fashion market they're gonna want an automatic gearbox they're gonna want fully automatic so it's just twist and go because that's the ease of today we are very lazy people now and I appreciate the laziness in a bike don't get me wrong in a scooter I embrace the laziness yeah what I'm basically saying about this gearbox is it adds to the fun it adds to the charm it kind of makes the bike now you have to ride one for a little period of time to get used to it but once you do it makes sense right so here she is in all her glory the sun is shining down on her it's the c125 the brand new 2019 super cup from honda so let's have a little look around and show you some of the features on this bike and what it's all about basically let's start with the wheels you've got 17 inch rims on the front and the rear now don't laugh at the size of the tires it's a 70 90 17 and on the back is a 80 90 17 they're very thin these tires are very thin but what that means is it does turn in really quick it really flicks into the corners nicely 17 inch wheels are a big bonus on a little scooter brakes uh, you've got abs and a disc on the front on the rear you've got a drum brake i suppose it is a classic i would have put a disc on the back myself being a modern bike but it sort of works doesn't work as well as a disc but it works it stops you so that's the brakes right so let's quickly run you down this side the other side show you some of the stuff before i turn the bike on uh, show you through the dash and the light so down this side it's got this plastic kind of uh, weather shield that keeps i don't know my legs stick out here so i'm not sure what's going to keep off but if you tuck your legs in it keeps some of the weather off you've got a brake lever foot peg a uh, nice chrome exhaust uh, swing arm which is nice because it's painted in the same color as this and I have to say the paint on this is pretty good this is candy white I don't know if you can see that on the camera and this is a candy blue so it's really nice this comes in candy red and candy blue with these white accents and it looks pretty good and the wheels I have to say with this polish bit on they look really nice it's really stylish I'm very impressed with it uh, there's not really a lot to tell you about on this bike it's a homage to the uh, super cub to the c90s the c70s c50s right so let's go through the keyless ignition with you that's right it's keyless i mean it's a classic retro bike but it's got keyless ignition like so you have to be within whatever it is five feet of it ten feet of it press that and it'll turn it on and then you just sort of like switch it and that turns it all on what i'll do is sit on the bike and we we'll go through that startup sequence right so i've got the keyless ignition in my hand so all i do is tap that in it's letting me know the keys within range so i can start it i flick that one and the ignition is engaged now the startup sequence is just a simple sweep of the speedometer and on the little digital bit in the middle you've got a fuel gauge you've got a gear indicator you've got your total miles and a clock this is a little button all it does is trip a and trip b that's it for the computer system you've got little lights down here little key down here which is telling you the fobs within range you've got a full beam light your indicator light engine management neutral and abs which will go off at five miles an hour on the dash here you've just got your high beam and your normal beams you've got your indicators your horn and over here your starter and front brake there is no clutch it is a semi-automatic gearbox and you've got this one for down and this one for getting back to it's really hard to explain it's got four down you tap down on that and you go one two three four and then to get it back to neutral four three two one you hit this one so it reverses it it's really weird it's reversed as i said on the way up here it takes a little bit of getting used to but you can use it it's not a problem you do get used to it in time if you've got big feet your feet might sort of like 
like mine go over both of the pedals so it's a bit weird in that sense i would have liked a, a bit more of a normal gearbox to be honest as in kick it up and then just push it down but that's my preference some of you guys will sort of like say well this is what it should be it should be a semi-automatic gearbox like this and this is the way it was supposed to be it is a centrifugal force gearbox if that makes sense i don't know if it's force did i need to put force on the end of them well i did if it's not a centrifugal force and it's just a centrifugal gearbox you'll forgive me for that anyway the chains in there is chain driven and it's all sort of like sealed so it shouldn't get too dirty you can oil it through there and adjust it through your normal means suspension's all covered up as well it is okay it's not the greatest suspension but it is a small bike so you don't really expect much from this it handles pretty well you can feel the bumps but it doesn't upset it it doesn't throw it all over the place it's okay it's okay i really like it i really like the look of this bike i like little touches like this the super cub written there the little chrome badge there i like the colors mirrors as i said on the way up here pretty useless for me but that's just the way it goes all right let me show you under the seat you've got a little button here you've got to have the ignition off it's something to do with safety when you're fueling you press this button here and that releases the seat and that's where you put the fuel in it's got a 3.7 litre tank in it and it does 188 miles to the gallon so they reckon with this tank 150 odd miles to one tank so not bad and it's also got this little button here and that opens uh, your little toolbox i mean you'll probably take that out and uh, put your phone in there or something your wallet but that's a handy little cubby hole but apart from that it's got zero storage so it's not the ideal scoot if you want to carry a load of stuff. Right, let's have a little look at the lights. Right on the front, you've got LEDs. You've got an LED top bit there and an LED stripe, like a running light in the middle. And underneath will be your full beam. I should have turned the indicators on when I was over there, but I'll do that now. Again, they're LEDs, and that's front and rear, two little LEDs on each side. They're pretty nice because they're integrated into the handlebars. I like that. So on the rear, again, LEDs either side and you've got a nice sort of like retro brake light come running light in the middle there i quite like it there's not really a lot more i can tell you about this bike in here it looks like it's a little glove box but i think it just holds all the ignition stuff for the keyless so there's nothing in there uh, it comes with a center stand doesn't have a side stand only comes with a center stand but it's a pretty good bike i like it it does feel like a bmx when you're riding it, it is really 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 light if I remember correctly, it weighs 109 kilograms. So, it's like a bag of crisps. It's not really, it's nothing like a bag of crisps. It's a motorcycle. Right, I like this as well. I like the old school Honda badge there. Right, so let's crack on and ride it just a little bit more. Oh, let me uh, show you the alarm first. Right, so that's locked. I think that's armed. If I shake it, the alarm should go off. <laughs> Didn't work, did it? Maybe it's that one. Let's try it with that one. Maybe that's the alarm. There you go. That's the alarm. It's not very loud. But it comes with an alarm as standard, so that's something you can tell the insurance companies and may bring it down by a pound or two. Right, so before we set off, I want to show you exactly how light this bike is. So I'm just going to stand up and just lift the front wheel in the air. Look. <laughs> it is really light. Right, let's crack on with this extra bit of riding. Right, so a quick summary before I take this bike back. Ergonomics, okay, six foot two, and I get on with it okay. It's a little bit small for me. It does feel like a BMX, I have mentioned that before. Single seat, so I'm sitting right on the rear of the seat. If I sit where I'm supposed to sit, it's quite comfortable to see. It's got a lot of padding, very nice. Uh, pegs are okay. Gear shift is a bit annoying, we've touched on that. The rear brake is in a nice position. The front brake's in obviously the same position it is on all bikes, and that works. Uh, mirrors, absolutely pants, uh, unless you love your elbows, which I do, so it's fine for me. But if you want to see the traffic behind, not very good. Dashboard is very clear, very easy to read. Gear indicator, uh, everything on there you need to know. Your speed's easy to read. Lights, uh, I can't comment on those. They look okay. Haven't ridden it at night, so I can't comment on that. Suspension is okay, not the greatest, not the worst. Irons out some of the bumps. You can feel some of the vibration in other bumps. Handling wise, pretty good. 
pretty good for a scooter. You can have a hell of a lot of fun on this just simply because of those tyres, those thin wheels, those 17 inch rims. It means you can take the corners at faster speeds than you would on a normal scooter. Now I'm not recommending you do that, only do that if you're either stupid like me or fully trained in the art of scooter racing. Looks wise, it's pretty nice. It's a pretty good looking bike. I like it in this blue. I would like to see the one in red because when I envision these bikes, I always imagine them in red and white. So I'd like to see the candy red on this. But the blue and the white, both in candy, look really nice. Under the sunlight, they've got a nice glint to it. And it's pretty well made. It's quite solid for a scooter. But it is a Honda, so you know it's going to be well made. Speed, not very fast. I think I've got about 55, 60 downhill. That's about it. On the flat, 50-ish. So it's not an arm ripper. You're not going to break your neck. You're not going to end up with whiplash due to acceleration, but it's okay. I mean, it's a little 125. I would say the automatics feel quicker than this. But once this is going and you're playing with the gearbox, you can really hustle it for a 125. Keyless ignition. I'm not sure if I get that on this bike. I mean, I know it's modern retro and they're all going keyless now, but a key would be quite simple and it'd keep the cost down slightly i don't know whether it's something to do with the immobilizer and the alarm system they wanted to put it all in one go and this is the way they're going forward on all their 125s so it probably is but a little key wouldn't be too bad it kind of gives you that retro feel i mean i might be a little bit weird here but i quite like putting a key in a bike so i should end the video here but before i do the million dollar question is, or should I say the 3,399 pound question is, because that's how much this costs, don't ever say I don't do my research, is would I buy this bike? And you know what? 100% yes, I would. I absolutely love this bike. I wasn't sure at first, but the more I've ridden it and the more fun I've had, yes, I would have one of these in my garage in a heartbeat. As I said before on some other reviews, if I had the money in my pocket now, I'd be handing over that cash money to the bike shop and buying one of these Super Cubs. It is a great bike. It makes me smile. It makes me happy. And for those reasons, it's a great bike. It's not a great bike in the sense that it's going to blow your socks off. It's not powerful. It's not crazy. It's not mad. It's just a great bike. And if it makes me smile and makes me happy, yes, 100%, I'd have one in my garage. Right, so just before I end the video, I just want to say once again, thank you very much to Doble's Motorcycles down in Causton that gave me this bike for today. This is the first one in the UK, I believe, for a review. I shall leave the website for Doble's down below in the description box. So go and check them out. They've got some great bikes, some great new bikes. They are a Honda dealer, but they do use bikes as well. And they are very good quality and very good people to deal with. If you do see Ian, who is the salesman, I've said this in previous videos, go up to him, say the fish sent you, and just give him a big, big hug. He really loves it. Also, I shall leave the specification for this or the link to the Honda specifications for this bike below as well. So you can check out everything on there, Doble's website and Honda's website, and you can get all the information you need for this bike. If you do want to know more about it, go over to Doble's website, give them a call, and they'll be only too pleased to help you out. So I'm going to end the video here. It's been great being out on a glorious day like this. It's been really good to get back out doing these reviews for you guys. I hope you like it. If you want to leave a comment in the comment section, feel free, just drop it down there. So let's end it here. You know what I'm going to say? Don't forget to subscribe, to like, to share, to do all those things that you need to do. I shall see you on the next one. You know I love you all. Stay safe. Fish out. Get out your bags. Get out my house. I don't want your stuff around. I never did you wrong, but you did me wrong. So go ahead, get go, gone. Get, go. get all your bags. Get out my house. I don't want your stuff around. I never did you wrong, but you did me wrong. So go ahead and get gone.